being in a band turns you into a child and keeps you there. When did you say that? No idea. I think uh, I think it, I think as as a band you you it's sort of like a club and you stick together. And, but there is a point where you actually do have to grow up. <laughs> From doing the bends and uh, finishing OK Computer, we did a, quite a lot of growing up. And that's not to say we don't live in limbo, which we do. And I think the band that, that did the first album, the first Radiohead album, mm. does feel like you know seven year old thirty compared to what we're doing now. I think <clears throat> a bunch of idiots. <laughs> The growing up bit is realising what you're doing with Creep and so on. We didn't know what was going on, we didn't have a clue what was happening. And so everything was just wrong. Um, when you're on tour, it's sort of, you do a lot of things are taken care of. Um, but there are actually reasons for that. It affects me um, if, say, I have to have meetings with people or you know, that sort of thing. It, 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 I know that by the end of the day, my head is so full up with noise that, um, you know, so you you um, exist in a necessary vacuum. I, personally, that's the way I see it. And if you can't concentrate when you're on stage, if you can't focus what you're doing, then it's a waste of time. When you live Just like an angel Your skin makes me cry You float like a feather a Beautiful world I wish I was special You're so special music was crap. Mm. I'm nowhere crap. Yeah, uh, yeah, we still have that, I think, sometimes. But we All the time, actually. Wouldn't it be terrible if, if um, we never worried about the music being bad? Just assume that every album was always going to be faultless. Um, I think it's a good thing to, good belief to have. I think by the end of OK Computer, we just decided everything was, well, not crap, but like, you could see, we could just see so many holes in it that we had to stop. We just became so obsessed by the whole idea. And I think that was a reaction really to like the first record being done in three weeks when we didn't know what we were doing and yet having to live with it for two and a half, three years. Live with the consequences of that, which we just thought was so absurd just because we never expected anybody to buy it at all. Mm. We did it for to learn, we didn't... It was just so odd. So, mm. I think we have a sort of manic, um, a pathological, uh, I mean, almost to the point of extreme unhealthiness, really, uh, of thinking everything we do is shit all the time. Do we enjoy playing live? Um, <clears throat> it used to be the only thing we enjoyed, in a way. Um, recording used to be a chore until about halfway through the bends. Um, now they're both as exciting as each other, really. It's something that you miss when you're touring. When touring is something you miss when you've been in the studio for four weeks. Or, so or a year and a half. Or a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so it's constant anticipation, really kind of live a life of constantly, you know, can't wait to get home. And when you're home, you can't wait to go off on tour. And it's quite, um, again, quite a buzz.
it can be very tiring. Touring can be exhausting, and you can you can lose interest in in terms of you know you you sometimes do feel like a jukebox. You know, you're playing. We try and we change the sets a lot, but we have to play songs off OK Computer. We have to play songs off the Bend. Some songs off Papa Honey. There are only so many you know different permutations you can you can make. For us, it's like when we when it's when it's best when we're playing is when we're sort of in a sort of dream a dream state anyway. If it's a good show and you feel that you've played well and you feel that when you left the stage there's something in the air that wasn't there when you started, then you've, re you've really done something and have to make the most of it, you know, for as long as you can. So when people sort of like, so I don't go and say hello to anybody. Most of the time I'll just go sit on the bus now because I can't, can't do anything else. <laughs> caught about a month ago and it's, it's an oasis trans met a very different kind of energy it's much more like a, a group like a, a mob thing you know like um, you know there's not that kind of like each person in the audience feel they're being singled out with some of the some of the songs it's more of a sort of big communal you know sing booze along. up sing along thing you know but um, so um, you know, and, and, and the, I think the fact that we've been like being able to like be quite successful in a lot of these large shows at, 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 at not doing that but ha rather having sort of an empathy between the audience and the performances to do with like Tom trying very hard to, to do that to feel that he's communicating with uh, individually and severally with the audience. It's one of our strengths and also one of our great weaknesses. Emotional honesty, you know, when you do, do a gig you can tell when Radiohead aren't doing a great gig or when they are doing a <laughs> when we are doing a gig because it's you know, we, we're not gonna, we're not gonna bullshit. We're not gonna bullshit the audience. <laughs> Something. I wish it was the 60s, I wish we could 
to be happy Wish, I wish, I wish that something would happen The biggest battle I have at the moment is the, to persuade people that a lot of the lyrics I write are very funny. <clears throat> what do you think, Johnny? I think there's a lot of humour in our records, actually, to be honest. Um, quite dark, admittedly, but a whole concept like, um, dangerous word to use, but whole idea is like karma police and certain parts of um, Paranoid Android um, are patently ridiculous, <laughs> you know. Is there a lighter side? Yes, what is the lighter side? We are the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Paranoid Android is definitely a joke. You can't possibly take that song completely seriously. Unless, you're, of course, you're a critic. I think what Tom managed to do on OK Computer was that, for instance, take Paranoid Android, that was him being basically a voyeur in a fairly hideous um, bar in Los Angeles and watching all these people around him. Hence the, the Gucci little piggy line. Three years ago, he might not have been able to sort of withdraw himself from the actual events going on, kind of left going, this is horrible. He's now got the ability to sort of, you know, sit on the sidelines and watch these things going on. So, um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not funny, ha ha. <laughs> But the the I think it's particularly more with funny peculiar. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you laugh at peculiar things sometimes. Out yeah, of I, I can't help that. And I think that the, the great thing about that was the video. Was Magnus Carlsen's video sort mm. of brought the humour out a bit more. A lot of the time, it's the title, um, and the title will give everyone a sort of vague idea of what what we're trying to aim at, and um, but not you know not not all the time by any means. Um, uh, sometimes it's just a sound that someone makes, uh, like with Lucky, the sound of the guitar at the beginning to us was sort of like sleigh bells. There's always a point where things spark off, but um, it's not necessarily a title, but there is, I think um, that's the kind of most rewarding point for us as sort of five people the most rewarding point in doing anything that we do. I remember when we did Street Spirit, we had s so much trouble with that, we rehearsed it for months. Couldn't get anywhere with it at all, and, and it just, we were just sort of, we thought, well, we'd better try it in the studio, and we, no, no, no. And going round and round and round and round, and it didn't really, wasn't really working, and then, I don't know, we, we, we just carried on for some reason, for no good reason, and then, just stood back at, at the end of, of the second day of doing it and it was all there. And like we hadn't, you know, like we, we hadn't even, even been involved, it just done itself. And it's so odd. So that's always what we're aiming at, you know. Whether that comes from a title or whether it comes from of, uh, most of the time you're just not looking. It's whenever you're not looking, it turns up. And so you're in a constant state of panic that it'll never turn up again. The most exciting time for me is when we've got what we suspect to be an amazing song, but nobody knows what they're going to play on it, and that's the best feeling. Tom sits down and plays your exit music, just with an acoustic guitar, and says, right, well, we're going to put this on the album. I mean, it's, it's kind of daunting and exciting in equal parts, I think. Um, it's quite a delicate thing, knowing what to put on top to make it better, or not to make it worse. Um, and it's, it's, it's a kick, you know. It's the part where there isn't anything and then suddenly two days later there is. Yeah. Something concrete and uh, physical and, and it's, that's a big rush, really big rush. And you can last on that for months. You can last on that for months and months and months and months. All sorts of shit can happen, but if, you've, if you had that, 
and you can last for months. It'll keep you going forever. Great. Our videos are not works of art, they are promotional tools used to make money. Yeah, I mean they are, you know, I can't, I can't really see the difference between, between shooting a video and making a car advert. It's like you, you know, you, you work really hard on something and then, and then you have to um, put it on television, along with everything else on television. And no matter what you do, no matter what you do with a camera for that three and a half, four minutes, whatever it is, you are in this little box where everything else lives, you know, where everybody mediates their existence. It's not art. You can't get precious about it. It's kind of really sad that you can end up spending twice or three times as much as you did making the record and making the videos for it. The other side of that is that we're quite confident and excited about what we do. 
it's it's something we complain about but it's also something we enjoy doing well whether it be finding a director who's never made a video before and putting a camera in their hands or just trying to do something different constantly um, that that creates its own excitement mm. Jake Scott uh, uh, when he proposed the idea for fake plastic trees um, and the way he described it and I just I was you know I got I couldn't believe that someone had picked up on it so well, you know. I was I was really proud that because what that meant is whatever we tried to achieve in the music, we'd done to an extent. If someone had responded to it in that way, it was like, wow, that's really exciting. That's yeah. amazing. But we've there are there are songs that we've done that we, that we've released as singles that we've absolutely ha we absolutely hate now. Really, Pop is dead, and we released that on a whim, and it was not a very good song, but we just released it, and that. You should be allowed to make mistakes. What we always try and do is, is challenge people's um, preconceptions of the band. So I, I think it would be really cool to, to, to come out one day and, and just to maybe just release a single or whatever that's pure pop. And, like, and people go, I can't believe it. Is this Radiohead? We did on Most Wanted, um, Carly Simons, Nobody Does It Better. Um, I think all for differing reasons. We, not only is the song great, it's a classic. Tom, Tom wanted to sing it because it's the sexiest song he believes that's ever been written. And I think that uh, we wanted to do it as well because it's kind of, it's the antithesis. We, we, we're seen as a certain way and it kind of seemed it's again something quite different for us to do something like that. And it was a James Bond theme. I mean. Somehow you found me I try to hide from your love Like heaven above me Despite your love me It's keeping all my secrets safe tonight And nobody does it better Sometimes I wish someone would Nobody does it Quite the way you do Why'd you have to be so Depends what you mean by famous, if you sort of mean Hollywood famous. No, not really. Uh, famous for, for doing good bits of stuff, then yeah, that'd be cool. Famous for going to film openings, no. Famous for being quite good at something, yes, maybe. Famous for being a loud mouse, no. It's quite useful sometimes, as they say. But um, uh, it's not not a guiding force, really. It's not something that's basically terrifying, I think, for me. Heath Moon or Descartes, where do you stand? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tom York, life philosophy. 
The most essential thing in life is to establish heartfelt communication with others. Hmm. There's bugger all else to do. <laughs>